When it comes to taxes and retirement, there's no reason it should be as complex as people make it out to be. You put money into an account, you let it grow for X amount of years, and all of a sudden you have an incredible amount of money. Now this rings true with Roth IRAs as well. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the three key rules all Roth IRA owners need to know. Now you have to pay special attention to these if you have a Roth IRA, because if you break any of these, there can be some really tough tax consequences, which I don't want you to face. Now number one, we look at the income limits. Not everyone can contribute to a Roth IRA. Most workers can set aside $7,000 to one of these accounts. If you're over the age of 50, you can actually contribute another thousand. So you can put $8,000 in a Roth IRA in its entirety. But when you come to the higher income earners, they have a lower contribution cap. And there's actually a point where you can phase out of the contributions that you can put into a Roth at all. So just kind of talking about this, looking at the tax basis when you're looking at 2024, and you want to look at your modified adjusted gross income. That is right. It is the MAGI or the MAGI. Depending on your filing status, it is going to allow you your contribution limits. And of course, seek skilled tax advice when you're putting money into these accounts, because of course, there is a phase out period when, depending on how much you make, that you can actually phase out again of being able to contribute to these. So if you're single, head of household, married, filing separately, or living apart from a spouse, your contribution is up to 146 k So again, if your modified adjusted gross income is above that amount, um, you actually have a phase-out period. If you're over 161 you cannot contribute at all. Now, if you're married filing jointly, that actually goes to 230000 which is the contribution limit. Then you start seeing the phase out at 240000 You cannot contribute to it. And if you're married filing separate, if living with a spouse at any point during the year, there are no limits on contributions up to that limit. Now, when you look at the reduced contribution, 10000 and under, so it's very, very basic. And again, that's a very unique scenario that I see with the Roth IRA if it does come up. Now, of course, you never want to contribute more than you're allowed to because you could pay a penalty that the IRS will take. So if you're putting too much money into a Roth account, you will be required to pay a penalty. And of course, you could pay up to 6% access contribution penalty for going ahead and making those deposits. So if you put money in and then you go ahead and you have to take it out, chances are there could be a penalty that is imposed from the IRS. Now, if you don't believe that you can contribute to IRAs, but still want to put money into Roth accounts, there is a backdoor Roth IRA, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but definitely a quick Google search is going to reveal exactly what this is. You make traditional IRA contributions, then you do the Roth contribution in the same year, which of course results in the same effect, meaning that you're going to have the money in that Roth IRA. But again, that is a tricky tax strategy that people have to follow. Now, before we look at number two, coming on this three key rule list, definitely subscribe to the channel, drop some comments down below, give it a thumbs up, and let's get into this. So the second big rule that you need to know is how the IRS taxes Roth IRA funds. This is very important because of course, when you're putting money into a Roth IRA, you do not get a tax benefit. You are paying all of your taxes and the money you're putting in there is post-tax dollars, which means there is no tax advantage to this. However, there's no early 10% withdrawal penalty either, which of course you can withdraw contributions tax-free at any age. Now, of course, notice I did say the contributions you can go ahead and you can withdraw money out of there. That is not gains. That is growth. That is not earned in there. In addition, when you look at this, um, this is a reason why a lot of people like to do the IRAs because if they plan to retire before 59 and a half, they can still have access to funds in the Roth IRA. And again, not being able to get to those actually growth or your essentially how much that IRA has grown since you put money in there. Now, of course, before the earnings, the withdrawal rule gets a little bit more complicated because, of course, with the taxes, why wouldn't it? You will pay a 10% penalty if you take out earnings out of your Roth while you're under 59 and a half unless you have a qualified reasons. Now, of course, this is where it gets into paying a little bit of a penalty if you're taking money out of there, depending on what it's for. Because, for instance, if it is a first-time home purchase, you can go ahead and you can withdraw money out of there at $10,000 maximum. Or if you become disabled, you're going to have the ability to take money out there as well. And of course, when it comes to the earnings, that's where the penalty comes in. 
So again, the contributions you're putting in there, you can take money out because of course, that is after tax dollars. If you're looking to take any of the earnings out of there or what it has actually grown, this is where you could be a 10% penalty if you're under 59 and a half, unless of course, one of those qualifying reasons. Then of course, the third one, which is probably one of the most important, which is the five-year rule. The five-year rule affects how the IRS is going to tax Roth earnings. Essentially, it states you must have a Roth IRA for five years before you can withdraw your earnings tax-free. That's right, again, there's another caveat to this with the five-year rule. Taking earnings out will trigger income tax. It, even This can ring even true if you're over 59 and a half, although in a situation, you might not have to worry about the early withdrawal penalty, but you could still pay taxes if you're taking those earnings out before or before this five-year rule is met. So again, this is very important. Now, there's also a separate five-year rule for conversions. So again, the complexity of this is kind of crazy. If you can convert money from a 401k or traditional IRA, moving it into a Roth IRA, it must stay in that account for five years before you can take it out. So if you have an, a Roth IRA open, let's say you're making contribu contributions for 10 years, then you have a traditional IRA. You convert, let's say $10,000 over to the Roth. It is a separate five-year conversion, essentially for the money, that $10,000 that you converted over. Now, of course, however, the five-year clock begins January 1st, and it is the first of every single year, which means you can do a conversion on the very last day, essentially in December, and then you'll get January 1st, will already count as one year. So again, there's a way kind of through the calendar that you can kind of play with that. It's also no worth thing that even though you withdraw your IRA funds before retirement, it's not always the right move because you will really halt the growth and you'll really stagnate what is a meant to be a big, big retirement account. Now, the reasons why I really focus on and why I say it is always more beneficial to do a Roth 401k or Roth IRA, because for a lot of people, you'll realize that as your accounts grow, especially if you have you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years to allow these accounts to grow, the accounts will grow to a size where if it is in a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k, when you get to a certain amount where you're required to take uh, the required minimum distributions. So when you're actually taking money out of those taxable retirement accounts, the chances are if you've given it an incredible amount of time to grow and also made substantial contributions, you're going to be paying far higher tax and the tax bracket that you're falling into, making those contributions or taking the money out of those taxable retirement accounts. This is the reason why I always recommend putting money into those Roth accounts because essentially you're paying your taxes up front in the year that it's earned. Of course, you might be, pay, be paying a little bit more. You might be in a higher bracket, but ultimately when you start compiling the 20, 30, 40 years of growth, the tax-free money you're gonna get out of there will literally tenfold be more valuable than it is going in there and doing those traditional accounts. So guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.